Okay, here's a quick video about a new gaming device I've got. It's a portable handheld uh, device called a GPD XD. It's from GPD, who've done other um, sort of handheld models, I think a Q5, a Q9. I've not had one of these before, and most of my videos recently have been on Retro Pi, sort of uh, Raspberry Pi based emulation. But this has been, uh, got a lot of attention because of the, the changes that it's made, and the build quality is surprisingly better than you might expect. So it's a sort of flip open um, style, a bit like uh, sort of Nintendo models you get. Um, and you can see that the sort of clamshell design there is pretty sturdy, it's uh, held together pretty well. You can see um, on the flip side the, the sort of screws are covered up really well. It feels um, decent quality. Uh, it's got a half decent weight to it, it's not really flimsy and it's not too light. Um, and it's got various uh, connectors on the back. You've got an S micro SD card for uh, external storage here. Um, this came with a uh, card actually uh, from the supplier. There's a couple of big suppliers for it. Um, I think Geek Buying and Wilgu. They both um, are based in Hong Kong, I think, and uh, ship worldwide. So it's pretty easy to get hold of one. You've got the uh, shoulder buttons R1, R2, and obviously over here you've got L1, L2. They've got a good click to them. See that? I don't know if that's focusing that well. But they feel pretty um, sturdy, certainly not going to come off in a hurry. Same with this one here. You've got the uh, audio headphones coming out there. Got a mini or micro HDMI that um, can go to HDMI. I've tried that out on a couple of TVs. That seems to work pretty well. And you've got the micro USB connector there to hook it up to your PC to charge it or to access uh, the file system with it. And we've got the hinge back here so it opens up. Um, you can, actually, a few people in the forums have said about the hinge and the noise, and you can hear it a little bit here when I open it. That's that's closed as it stands there, and if I slowly open that, it's quiet there. There, so about 90 degrees, it makes a bit of a creak, and then sort of from there, it's not too bad. It's mostly around this point here has a bit of a creak but to be honest once you've set the angle you're only opening it once and then it's not going to happen a lot so I wouldn't let that put you off um, maybe a bit of WD-40 would fix it I don't know but it doesn't feel stiff when you're trying to do it it just feels you know firm which it should do and it can hold all of the positions quite well it doesn't sort of drop open at any point it'll hold it where it is it feels quite sturdy it's, it's fine it just makes that creak there um, okay so other sections on this we've got when you open it up you can get it all in one there really need a better camera but you get the idea um so yeah you've got the little um sort of bezel there that's just for display gpd you've got a start and select button mark there uh d-pad here analog pad here and here left and right Although the, the sort of clip, the press down, is here. Um, I guess that works well for this type of portable playing, but that's that's where the, the click down for that is, so you don't press this down. Um, over here you've got volume, um, and I think I don't think it has another function, but you've got um, you have to reduce and obviously increase the volume. Over here, now this is an Android device. This is the first Android device I've ever used, so there's probably lots of parts in this video where you'll think... Um, that's just, uh, you'll know a lot more about it than me basically. I'll run through what I've um, sort of learned in the past few days, but because it's Android, I'm not that familiar with the operating system, but um, I'm sure when, uh, when we run through that, uh, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so uh, again, you've got the buttons here marked sort of in the PlayStation and, or I suppose Super Nintendo and uh, Xbox fashion. Or uh, PS, PS3, you've got the triangle, square, uh, X and circle. And then obviously X, A, Y, B. Uh, over here, I think these are common Android buttons. It's like a back button there and a home button there, I think. And then up here, you've got, I don't know what that icon is, but when you press it, it brings up all the sort of open processes so you can quickly um, see what's running. And then this button here, this one with the gamepad icon, brings up a screen where it's got an on, on, uh, on display overlay with all the um, touchscreen buttons because it is a touchscreen. Um, device so, and it's pretty responsive as well you don't have to press hard it's easily detects your presses and, and it's pretty fast as well 
Uh, okay, and that's pretty much it in terms of battery. You've got the speakers at the front here. The audio on it's pretty good. It's fine, really. Um, it's got quite a range on the, on the volume there. And uh, what I'll do, I'll hook it up using... Close it up there. I'll hook it up using this HDMI cable and see if I can capture um, some on-screen sort of um, display and run some emulators as well, because that's mainly what I'm using it for, emulation. Although it's, you know, perfectly good. Android device. This one's a 16 gig model, and you'll see on the forums there's 16 gig, 32 gig. The 32 gigs tends to be they're all blue, but you do seem to be able to get some black 32 gigs. It's all a bit sketchy at the minute, but this is a very common model, the 16 gig blacks. So there's plenty of those um, about and available. But yeah, it's a um, solid device, well made, very portable, similar in size to um, the Nintendo handheld, and uh, it's pretty much that's pretty much. Um, all I've, all we need to cover on the sort of outside hardware side of things, I think. Uh, obviously, a power button here. If I hold that, let's see if we get um, beat up screen. There we go. You've got the GPD logo there. It doesn't take very long to beat. Like I say, I haven't used Android before, so there's plenty of um, areas on this. I'm sure you'll know more about than I do. But I've just been trying to get to grips with getting the emulators, getting the ROMs to play on them, and see how they go. So this should beat up pretty quickly and then obviously you can keep it on and, and uh, I've had it on for hours and it goes into sleep mode oh and I've worked out how to get a different launcher so this is I forgot the name actually but I should be able to find it in here if we go in um, see uh, then I go this button and this one and settings and home and it's smart launcher pro but I won't, I won't in this view because it's a bit awkward to try and show you the, the accuracy. But you can see the performance is, is pretty good. It um, jumps back and forth between different screens quite quickly. It's no lagging. And I'll, I'll show you the, the more accurate stuff with the proper game capture. But as a device, yeah, you can hear it creaking again there. Nice degree angle. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty sound device. It's about 150 dollars I think so it's at 120 115 pounds something like that um, and it's quite capable it's got 16 gig inbuilt storage as you saw here and you can put I guess whatever side SD card you want this one came with a 32 gig which is more than enough for a lot of uh, retro emulation but yeah it's GPDXD and I'll put the link in the comments and I'll just try and fit now to um, getting a video capture of the system itself so we can see um, what it can do and the emulators, uh, sort of the speeds it runs it at, and uh, generally the performance. Okay. Okay, here it is on the screen. There's a bit of glitchiness with me hooking it up to the video capture and then watching it on my TV. So my TV does flash now and again, but I don't think that's appearing on the uh, video capture, so it should be good there. This is the, the um, screen of the launcher when it boots up. So if we go in there, and uh, this is some uh, shortcuts I've done. Whoa, okay, I didn't want to do that. Uh, back. Um, again, you know a lot more about Android than I do, so let's uh, go back here and go to settings, and we just have a quick look at the system. So I've got Wi-Fi, obviously. It's happy to hook up to Wi-Fi. I've got the data usage section, uh, where I've been downloading data. Uh, so go home. That's where I put Smart Ultra Pro. Um, default one's Metro, which is really kind of quite limiting in the aesthetic. You can't do an awful lot. It's probably quite friendly in terms of ease of use, but it uh, doesn't give you much flexibility. So I downloaded this Smart Launcher Pro, or I guess you don't have to use one at all. And I think you can default to Launcher 3, which is very basic. Anyway, um, yeah, that's what I've got. Sound. Okay, so different options there. I haven't really played with that at all. Um, screenshot settings, storage, okay, so that's telling me how much I've got, I don't know if, okay, internal storage, and then I guess, yeah, it's got my external SD card there, and it auto mounts it, so um, it's pretty easy to access that, and I haven't had any problem putting ROMs on the external card, uh, I haven't tried installing the applications on the external card, but I, I don't know how to do that yet, but I'm sure it's easy, um, battery, let's see, the battery life's been pretty good, I reckon you get good I don't know, six or seven hours out of this, to be honest, if if you're just playing basic games, that sort of thing. Um, okay, apps, tells me what I've downloaded. 
it comes with some defaults like this bit game center and some other stuff I don't really recognize location security uh, buh, 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 different language settings so I've set UK as a default here um, what else we got date and time settings accessibility printing and about so it comes with Android 4.4.4 .4. I don't know if that can be updated um, but it seems I think that's KitKat but it seems um, pretty capable as it is and down here um, I think the I think the build number at the bottom there refers to no need you already I don't know what that means um, that release uh, relates to the firmware which I've just updated recently so I think the stock install is slightly older than that um, what else they got? Yeah, model number. It's an XD up here, and the manufacturer is a GPD, as we saw earlier. Um, yeah, system updates or something. Your system's up to date. Okay. Uh, status. Okay, just an overview of bits and bobs. Um, yeah, so that's that's the the basics of, of the setup there. And what I've done here, I've created a category emulation and try to pet all the emulation stuff there because that's really what I'm going to use it for although like I'm doing now I've hooked this up to a TV you can play it on a bigger screen but typically I'll probably play it on a portable device because otherwise if you're going to play it on a big screen you probably have a more powerful emulator I suppose um, but if you're in a hotel or something it could be useful to hook it up to a HDMI uh, display so here's the emulators. It comes with this one in the top left here called emulator. And if I press that, and when I'm navigating around, I'm just using the touch screen, but you can use the, the keys we saw earlier. It's kind of got this Happy Chick, KO Gamebox, and PP all in one, al along with this uh, um, different sort of setup down the bottom. But I don't quite get what how that's hooked up or what emulator it's using. It's kind of I don't know, making it a bit too easy to use. So if I quit out of that, I've downloaded the individual emulators like John GBC and MD EMU, that sort of thing. So if we try one like MD EMU, you can see here uh, we've got some options. Um, for some reason, the D pad on this bit doesn't work. Oh, I should have mentioned earlier actually that D pad. It's it is a little bit mushy. It it works. It's fine. It goes where you press it, but the quality of it doesn't feel brilliant. It it's especially if you're trying to move um, a lot of directions at once, like uh, in a fighting game when you're doing down, sort of down, right, right, it just sort of all blends into one. So it's not the highest quality feel to a D-pad that you find, but it does work. So do bear in mind if you want a lot of precision in the D-pad, it's, I don't know, it's not being precise, precision or precise isn't really fair to it. It does go where you press it, but on most D-pads, you can feel really distinctly what direction you're pressing at the time. This one, if you press, if you press down in the centre, it feels like it all all of the D-pad goes down at once. So mushy is probably the best description of it. But um, you know, it's, it does the job. Anyway, yeah. So down here, I've got to use the analog pad for whatever reason to navigate, as opposed to the D-pad. And in options, if I go there, I did make a change under video to overlay effect, and I put scan lines on this one at twenty five percent. So I've tweaked it slightly to get um, a scanline effect there. Now if I go back and go recent games on this one, go Street to H2, fire that up. Should get some sound here as well, I think. Okay, I'm gonna hit the start button on the main screen there. There's Axel, so hopefully this is capturing okay. It looks pretty good on the TV, the upscale of it is pretty good. I'm using D-pad there, that's that's working fine. I found the right buttons. Ah, okay, I just moved something on the analog stick and I think that's got a hotkey to the menu, so I'll stick with the D-pad, but I, I'm sure I could change that in the control settings. And I've read quite a bit about how these Android devices deal with the touch screen and change settings, but I don't quite get it all yet. So I need to learn how to map all that properly. But that's just a case of working out once and then it'll all be working. 
So at the moment, I'm playing this one anyway with, with the D-pad. And it's, it's pretty responsive, really. I wouldn't say there's any delay. Although that's a bit where actually it did. Maybe there is a slight delay on that actually. Yeah, you, you can probably see as well if you look carefully the, the scan line effect kicking in there. And as you saw on the option screen, you can make that more prominent just tweaking it a bit. But yeah, I mean, it works pretty well. Now if I press return, really good exit, yes. Okay, so I'm back there. Um, I've been playing a bit with RetroArch, trying to get my head around that. Um, I'm a lot more familiar with it on Raspberry Pi, but the principles are the same, obviously. So, And it took me a while to configure, but I think I've got it-ish. So if I load that, and then I load a core, so let's say I want to play... Uh, let's keep it simple and I'll go for Mega Drive again using that core. Load content and I'll select a file from the root and the mount directory. I'm sure I could set a preset path, it'd be a lot easier. External SD, ROMs, Mega Drive, and you can use the shoulder buttons to jump down quickly. Uh, if we go for Sonic or something, uh, where is it? Sonic the Hedgehog, okay. Okay, uh, I don't know if that's getting captured, but you've got the on-screen um, buttons there for some reason. So if I press that arrow in the top right, they go and then you get the arrow at the bottom centre, and I can press that and it comes back on. And then I'm not sure how to get rid of that arrow, but you can. But anyway, I'll press start. And start again. And I haven't configured RetroArch to use shaders or uh, overlays or anything, but obviously you can as well, so it's sort of more configuration, but you know, it's perfectly good uh, playability with that with that chord, I think it's Genesis Plus uh, something, GX. So RetroArch is, and obviously RetroArch is free as well, so it's a good way to get up and running uh, with a lot of systems at once and keep it all under one sort of umbrella rather than have 10 different emulators, you can just use RetroArch and it should do the lot really. I don't know why the volume can work. Anyway, get the idea. Um, actually, I don't know how I quit this. If I click that, again, got to remember what the buttons is. If I press the analog one, there we go. And we can just choose uh, a ROM. This is based on um, main 0.37b5. So that's the ROM set that it's using. Um, what's it got? Uh, Dude on Patchy, that's pretty good. Let's try that. Uh, select A and oh no, B to confirm. There we go. And again, you can see the on screen buttons. I'm not sure how to get rid of those. If I press options, uh, option settings, I could probably get rid of on screen display. Uh, Customise touch layer. No, that's not it. Backpack. Hang on. Settings. Let's try it once more. Uh, okay, you can change your ROM path as well, so you can have that the ROM sitting wherever you want. Default keys, customize touch layout. Default touch layout. Okay, touch type, digital extension. There we go. Off. Back. That's better. And it's a select to a credit, and it's got a dedicated select and start button as you saw earlier. So if I hit select in a second, it should uh, register a credit for this. Okay, it's 
just looking on the TV where it's um, obviously a larger, larger screen, it's not looking the best quality. Um, I don't think, um, well, I'm not proud of if this main droid has um, a scanline feature, but it's not looking great on the, the large screen. But on the, the current content tool on the actual screens, um, obviously that's smaller and quite happy with that. But performance is really good, keeps up very well. It's an old game, but still, there's uh, no slowdown. I'm not sure any of these would really push it. Um, maybe I need to try a different emulator. Oh, I could try this happy chick thing. That's hooked up with this em hooked up with that emulator. So I go into here. Maybe it's got an arcade game. Do the best emulator games. Yeah. Uh, where are we? Category. Arcade. I don't know what emulator it uses for the arcade, but it must use something. Um, I don't know how it chooses these as defaults. King of Fighters 97, 98, I'm just trying to think of one that might have a bit of oomph to uh, King of Fighters 2002, maybe that one. Metal Slug, because we get some slow down of those anyway, so it's probably not the best bet. King of Fighters 2003, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, let's try that. Well, that is 75 meg to download, let's try it anyway. That's not the quickest download. I've hooked this up to Wi-Fi, but it's still not massively fast. Um, maybe I can try playing one whilst it's waiting there. Let's fire one up. Um, so this one I think I've already got. I can work out how to play it. Again, not doing well here. Is that download going? Ch -ch 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 -ch. Nearly halfway. Is there a much smaller one? There's Snake Brothers, I suppose, but then that's not really going to push it. Try that one again. Press download. That's only four meg. Okay, start there. Single player. Right, it's got that on screen buttons again. I'm not too sure how to get rid of those. Select isn't adding a coin though. Okay, so. Oh yes, yes. Okay, right. So you can skip this. Stop. Right. Okay. So the analog button is moving it around. I'm struggling to play around my. There we go, right. Performance is pretty good, so we're going to stay down there. There's a lot of things on the screen at once, you can see. Anyway, right, 
Yeah, you're getting more depth. I can quit that. Uh, exit. Right, let's see how that Street Fighter's going. Okay, okay, single player. Again, you've got the overlay there, but I think you can get rid of that. I'll right, select, put a few credits in. Yeah, that's pretty good. Speed's pretty good. It's keeping up. If you notice the sound cut out sometimes, that's not the XD doing that. It's the way that capture card puts it through to the TV. Um, yeah, I'm using the D-pad here and struggling because it is quite difficult to tell where you are in the movement because it just goes flat a lot when you press it. When it works, but it's not working. Well. Just see if the analog pad works. It's default if you have to configure something. Yeah, it does. Might be easy using that, I don't know. But yeah, get an idea. Okay, again on the TV is the upscale is pretty bad, it's very blocky, but pretty good on the actual device itself and it takes out like, the full screen the ratio the suit the screen a lot of the more retro and stuff like the mega drive the stairs uh, is a bit more 4-3 based but uh, that's not really good just leaves a lot off the sides okay let's go with this uh exit that's touch screen there. um okay so yeah that's that's pretty much it really i mean it's a handheld device by gpd it's running android pretty quick it's got um I'm not sure what CPU it's got in there, but it seems perfectly capable of running everything it needs to, particularly <coughs> excuse me, particularly with the emulation and the different emulators that are about. And you can get them off the Play Store, which is uh, here, and there's another you can get on the way. You know, it's Android, so basically if it runs on that, it'll run on this. It's just about getting the physical keys mapped to work in the game show. But um, yeah, it's certainly one worth checking out, and I think a lot of people are more impressed with this one than uh, previous offerings for mobile gaming because perhaps it was underpowered or it's just feeling really cheap and tacky. But this one's um, pretty solid, so definitely worth a go. Anyway, hope you found the video useful. If there's a particular um, I don't know, game or emulator you want to try out, feel free to put it in the comments and I'll try and give it a whirl. Thanks. <laughs>